Good morning, one and all. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. The Lord's dialogue uh, is with his, or actually his monologue, uh, instructing the disciples before his passion uh, continues today from John chapter 15. We will have the gospel as our primary basis for the message. Um, the domino effect of Jesus' love. Today we follow the order of divine service setting for Holy Communion and our opening hymn is 556 Dear Christians, one and all rejoice. We will sing verses one through three, but put a ribbon there because we will be revisiting this uh, through all 10 verses in the course of the service. Dear Christians, one and all rejoice with exaltation springing, and with united heart and voice and holy rapture singing, proclaim the wonders God has done, how his right arm the victory won, what price our ransom cost him. Fast bound in Satan's chains I lay, death brooded darkly o'er me. Sin was my torment night and day, in sin my mother bore me. But daily deeper still I fell, my life became a living hell, so firmly sin possessed me. My own good works all came to naught, no grace or merit gaining. Free will against God's judgment fought, dead to all good remaining. My fears increased till sheer despair, left only death to be my share. The pangs of hell I suffered. Please stand as you're able. We continue with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But when you forgive his forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are also this day gathered to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. 
Amen. But God had seen my wretched state before the world's foundation, and mindful of His mercies great, He planned for my salvation. He turned to me a father's heart, He did not choose the easy part, but gave His dearest treasure. God said to His beloved Son, It's time to have compassion. Then go, my jewel of my crown, And bring to all salvation. From sin and the sorrow set them free, Fly bitter death for them that they may live. God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come and hear all you who fear God. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Bless our God, O peoples. For let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living. And has not let our feet slip. Blessed be God. Because he has not rejected my prayer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come and hear, all you who fear God. And I will tell what he has done for my soul. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. God, the giver of all that is good, 
by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading continues in the book of Acts at chapter 10, verses 34 through 48. And now we see the revelation of Jesus, uh, his appearance, his, the sign of the Holy Spirit, not only for the Jews, but for all people. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Jesus. to God. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and love. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. The epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 5, reading verses 1 through 8. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able. We then join in the verse. Amen. 
Alleluia. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Alleluia. Alleluia. is according to St. John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. Again, this is the basis for today's message. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what, is, what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We now return to hymn 556, Dear Christians, one and all rejoice. And now we sing verses 6 through 10. The Son obeyed his Father's will was born a virgin mother, and God's good plan. 
nature to fulfill. He came to be my brother. To soil our disguise he bore. A servant's form like mine he wore. To lead the devil captive. To me he said, stay close to me. I am your rock and castle, your ransom I myself will be, for you I strive and wrestle, for I am yours and you are mine, and where I am you may remain, the foe shall not divide. Though he will shed my precious blood, be of my life bereaving. All this I suffer for your good, be steadfast and believing. Life will from death the victory win, my innocence shall bear your sin. And you are blessed forever. Now to my father I depart, from earth to heaven ascending, and heavenly wisdom to impart, the Holy Spirit sending, in trouble he It's good to greet you and welcome you this day in our Lord. As today's message draws us in on this thought and reflection of the domino effect of Jesus' love. Dominoes isn't just a game of matching numbers. Dominoes have another use. It's the first use for kids, I think. Set up one next to another, and another, and another, for as many as you have, or as you like. And when they're ready, just push over the first, and watch the rest fall down, in sequence. Dominoes can symbolize life's events. We humans may stew in helpless dismay when one unfavorable event happens that triggers another, and yet another. Unwanted, sad, painful, and even deadly can be the downfall. What's the setup like in your life these days? Filled with joy? Burdened with sorrows? Distracted by many and various cares? Focused by God's word. In the Holy Gospel last Sunday, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. It speaks the truth that Jesus is the source for new, unending, eternal life in the love of God. Is the zest of the juice of the true vine bearing fruit? in you? Fruits of deepening faith in Jesus, the vine? Fruits of caring, of God-pleasing words and loving deeds that reflect 
the rule and reign of God and his way through your life? Is the zest of Jesus in you bearing fruits of peace, rest, refreshment, light, and life through you for a tired, selfish, me-first world? Or does the indicator on your spiritual gas tank soon after worship seem to plunge quickly down to half or quarter or that couple of hairs above the empty mark? You're ready to topple? The living word of Jesus speaks new life into empty, love-starved hearts and lives. The same word in the flesh, divine vine, that juices up the branches to bear much fruit is a source for you and me in God's love and joy and to be able to stand firm against life's testy shoves and pushes along the way that pull away from God's love and care. Jesus spoke all his Father commandment, commanded and kept his Father's commands perfectly to fill and renew your heart and mine with his love. Lovelessness is a kind of catch-22, isn't it? Just what does empty us of the joy, the confidence and, and willingness to act in love according to God's commands? Disciples of Jesus certainly face times of restlessness, of being unclear of what to say or do, how to speak or act amidst fast-changing cultural values that do not reflect the traditional Christian morals and values. Disciples face times of falling short of being good Christian examples, of being callous or unresponsive to others' needs, of fearing to speak up or reach out or defend others in care and love. We may reflect in hindsight, I could have spoken more kindly and listened longer than I did with so-and-so. Or I could have offered assistance with that need I recognized. It would not have been difficult. I could have, but I didn't. Faithful followers of Jesus can also face, simply put, outright rejection or unfair treatment in a proud world hostile to the Bible's truth. How much furor was caused when, do you recall back to the Miss USA 2009 pageant competition? How Carrie Pregian, I'm not sure how her name is actually pronounced, Pregian, Pregian, Miss California, was questioned about gay marriage. She stated she believes marriage should be understood to be between a man and a woman as God's word speaks. So much else of her life and her own inconsistencies with the truth have since come out under scrutiny. It can be costly to stand for Christ in an outward way. Life is not always a friendly experience. There is much that is loveless. Why try to care or stand up when it might make things worse? The hurt hits deep. Others don't treat us lovingly. So we simply pass on the same. Sometimes it seems even with Christian, fellow Christians that we care about that there can be experiences of betrayal of our confidence or they disappoint us. We recoil or retaliate or retreat or run away. Lovelessness chokes off joy and fruits of love from our own hearts and theirs too. 
lovelessness has dragged us down and out, caught and chained our lips out with a pout. We are emptied of trusting prayer, of caring love, of obedience to God's commandments, of fruitfulness and joy in life. To overcome this loveless catch-22 swirl, Jesus, the true vine, reveals the plan of God at work. He reverses sin's domino effect. Abide in my love, Jesus commands. How can Jesus' followers abide in love? Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. The Father loved Jesus. Jesus loved his disciples, to whom he is speaking. That's the basis for how we can do what he commands. Abide in my love, he says. How do we abide in Jesus' love? If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. We keep Jesus' commands. This is not merely the Ten Commandments, but the whole teaching of Jesus, the whole counsel of God's Word. Just as Matthew in the Great Commission at 28.19 says, teaching them everything that I have commanded you, this expands our consideration that Jesus' commands mean all he, the Lord, revealed about the Father's will. St. John testifies in the epistle reading, This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. The Spirit testifies by the Word of God. The water testifies in connection with God's Word and Jesus' command. Go, baptize all people in my name. The blood testifies of the once-for-all sacrifice of God's only begotten Son, whose body and blood were given to satisfy the law's accusations against your sins and mine, Jesus' word institutes, as we will hear and celebrate in moments. This is my body. This is my blood, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Keep, use, cherish, abide in these, the means of grace, the channels that declare God's heart in relationship to us. These declare forgiveness for the sins of lovelessness and faithfulness, faithlessness in our catch-22 world. They declare certain and steadfast hope, solid grounding for abundant life, even when our world comes crashing down around us. These gifts of God's love empower new life and its fruits in us unto fullness of joy. <clears throat> Can we keep and use these gifts as we truly need? Do we keep Jesus' commandments? We may try, but we also struggle. Left to our own efforts, we even fail in worship and desire for his word. Where we cannot trust our own love, it grows cold and loveless. The living word is truly for your and my love-starved lives. John 15 verse 10 continues with the how, the power for us to keep his commandments. 
as Jesus says. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. See, the domino effect affects us. For Jesus' command shapes our life with his abiding love. Jesus' obedience to the Father stands up for you and me as every disciple. He obeyed his Father in every detail to rescue all his disciples from their denials, doubts, and failures to love as they should. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Jesus fills us with his joy. He delights to give joy to us. He accomplishes in our lives what we are unable to do. So let's hear his word because of Jesus' joy in us. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus brings forth the Father's word and will. What is this love? That to which he bids us? And this points to what's about to happen in but ours. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friend. Amazing. The fulfillment of this greatest love was the climax of Jesus' life. It was the Father's eternal purpose for which he sent his Son. It would unfold just hours after this amazing discourse. In these words recorded by John the Evangelist and Apostle, God's heart of love for this angry, rejecting, and dejected world of sinners shows forth the depth of his care. He calls us friends. I have called you friends for all that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. God hasn't turned his face away. He made known his love for us. In Jesus Christ, he lived it out. And after laying down his life, he took it up again for us. Jesus is victorious, rising again to life after death. This all he did, not as a divine showing of power, but to bring this victory into your life and mine. He wants us also to rise to life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. That if sounds like a requirement, a law. But this if is not as if it's our choice to become Jesus' friends. Jesus' words following continue to show God's dominoes are still at work. This is his calling and empowering in you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. He is at work changing loveless lives, loved, starved hearts by his living word. His life pours into us. Our old estranged nature that was at war with God is drowned by baptism. Jesus called Andrew, Simon, Nathaniel, Philip, James, and John, Levi, and others of the 12 disciples directly in person. He called St. Paul directly after his ascension into glory. He sent his Holy Spirit through the preaching of the restored Simon Peter on Pentecost Day. The Lord called 3,000 into the church that very first day. He continues to send his spirit who works through the means of grace to call you and me and all people to himself. And so he brings us into his kingdom of grace. One day he will return 
at the appointed hour set by the Father and gather all his elect. He will pick up every chosen and precious child, maybe like the picture today, restored through faith in his name into the eternal kingdom to share his glory without end. Jesus' living words continue. I chose you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. We love one another because the Father loved the Son who loved us, who now love yet others. In Jesus' name. There we have it. We might call it the domino effect of Jesus' love. Because of his choosing us, we go, step out, work, take initiative to love in specific and real ways with the specific people in our lives. Jesus personalizes his presence to others through you and me. And did you hear? We have the privilege to speak personally to God the Father through Jesus who continues to intercede and pray for us. He who is love has changed forever our relationship to himself and one another. God's living word and sacraments nourish forgiveness and love that overflow into words and actions. We obey and are filled with his joy in the doing of his commands. Jesus' perfect desire is planted into your heart in your hearing and receiving his word, his means of grace, his will at work in you, grows to give glory and thanksgiving to the Father. We abide in his love as we obey his final word today. These things I command you so that you will love one another. In the same abiding love of Jesus, amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you invite us freely to come and hear your word. Bless and increase our faith that we may rightly fear you and learn what you have done for our souls. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Lord of all, you make known the good news of peace through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless and direct the work of our missionaries, that in every nation there would be people who fear God, do what is right, and, believing in Jesus, receive forgiveness of sins through his name. Likewise, we pray, bless and guide the work of Reverend Jacob Quast, called to serve as Director of Domestic Missions, Lutheran Church Canada. Lord, in your mercy. Father of love, out of great love for you and for sinners, our Lord Jesus laid down his life for the world. Increase in us true love for one another, that like our Lord, we may also lay down our lives for our friends. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Father, you rule this world by your established authorities in ways that we do not always understand. Yet in the name of Jesus, we may ask you anything freely as friends and sons. Bless our nation's leaders and cause them to serve wisely for our good. Give earthly peace and justice that is in accord with your commandments and the order you have revealed. Bring an end to injustice, violence, and disdain for your truth, and let us receive all good with thanksgiving. Keep peace amid the demonstrations seeking peace in Gaza and rescue the hearts of all people in repentance, faith, 
and humility before you that loves and serves one another. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, the giver of all that is good, grant your healing and support to all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Emily, Bill and Twyla, Joyce, daughter Ginger, and sister in Christ from Oliver, Eleanor in rehab, Linda and Lee, Fern, Elsie, Mark, Judy, Shirley, Richard, Audrey, Val, Renee, Jesse, Phyllis, Myrna and Gabriel, Rita and Jack, Laura Lee and Robert, Howard and Hannah, Carol and Martin, Reinhold, Audrey M, Heinz and Layton, Marjorie and Drew, Len and Ruby, Randy and Gail, Eva and Pastor Jonathan, and also these we name before you now. Now we ask you, dear Lord, to please speed up my brother Calvin as he still tries to get health issues sorted out. Give them also the gift of your grace to accept and bear their crosses with faith in you, that finally they would be prepared to depart this life and receive the gift of life eternal in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, at the death of your Son, you gave the testimony of your Spirit in the water and blood that poured from his wounded side. Grant that, having received this testimony in the water of baptism, we may also receive it in the body and blood of Jesus in the Holy Supper, and so overcome the world by our faith in him. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, Heavenly Father, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us by the gift of your Holy Spirit for faith and life. For the sake of your dear, crucified, risen, and ascended Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in triune glory, now and forever. Amen. We gather the offerings, and I'll prepare for the offering hymn. Please take it to the, the altar. The offering hymn is 845, Where Charity and Love Prevail. Where charity and love prevail, there God is ever found, brought here to
I invite you then to stand as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, with full acclaim shout the glory of your name sing hosanna in the highest sing hosanna to the lord truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord blessed are you o lord our god king of all creation for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death, he has redeemed us from bondage to sin and death. And by his resurrection, he has delivered us to new, into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth faithfully eating his body given into death and drinking his life's blood poured out for our salvation until we pass through death to the promised land of life eternal. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. 
For distribution is 617, O Lord, we praise Thee. Welcome to the Lord's table. Now may this true body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ keep and preserve you in the true faith to life eternal. Go in peace. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. We now conclude we we'll continue with the Nymph the Myths. Oh Lord, now let 
your servant depart in heavenly peace for I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace I to lead the Gentiles unto your holy hill the glory of your people your children and in Israel. All glory to the Father, all glory to the Son, all glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. For as in the beginning things now shall ever God's triune name resounded through all the eternity. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming we may, with, together with all your saints, celebrate the feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. The concluding hymn for the service, 829, Christ the Eternal Lord. Christ the eternal Lord, whose promise here we claim, whose gifts of grace are freely poured upon in your name. With thankfulness and praise, we stand before your throne, intent to serve you all our days and make your glory known. Christ, the unchanging Word, to every passing age, whose timeless teachings still are heard, set forth in Scripture's page, transform our thought and mind, enlighten all who My faith to find the bread of life indeed. Christ, the redeeming Son, who shares our human birth, and by his death, salvation won for every child of earth. Inspire our hearts, we pray. To tell your love abroad, let all be honor Christ today and follow him as Lord. Christ, the unfading light of everlasting day, our morning star in treasure bright. life to live till earth brief to the ends. Christ the ascendant King, 
exalted high above, whose praise unending nature can sing, whom yet unseen we love. When mortal life is past, your voice from heaven's throne shall call your children home at last to know as we God's peace be with you. To you, O soul, be God, and the Father's Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt Right hand.